Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, as one of the videos of a series of Power BI aggregation uh, and performance tuning, I want to talk about multiple layers of aggregation scenarios that this would help to improve the performance because just single layer of aggregation is not a real world scenario. To implement it in real world, you always need to have multiple layers of aggregation so that if one of the aggregations is not hit, the second would hit, the third would hit, and the performance still would be much better than the scenario that you would reach out to the actual fact table. Let's go and check it out. So in the previous videos, just a very quick um, overview, what we have talked about was that in order to improve the performance of Power BI uh, model, one of the ways is to use aggregation. When you have a large fact table, either imported or uh, direct query, because the data is because there are so many records and so much data in that table, um, any query to that table would be uh, performing slow. What uh, you can do instead is to create an aggregated version of that table. Uh, once you have that aggregated version of that table, then you'll import that table into Power BI and then you'll mention to Power BI that this is the table to use. So Power BI will use that instead of the actual fact table. That is the method we call as aggregation. Uh, in the previous videos, we have talked about a few of these. I'll switch into my screen so I can show this to you as well at the same time that I'm speaking. So in the previous videos, I've talked about the scenario of how to create that aggregated table. We talked about that process of creating it. This table can be created using DAX, uh, group by function, summarize. It can be cr created using group by in Power Query in Dataflow or Power Query in Power BI Desktop. You can use SQL um, to create this using group by command um, from Lakehouse, Warehouse, or from, from any database sources. It doesn't matter how you create it. I have a video specifically about that. Once you create that, you'll import it into Power BI, then you'll connect your dimension tables to that. Those dimension tables should have their storage mode as dual storage mode. And that is one of the other things that we talked about in another video. I explained what dual storage mode is, how this is important, how it functions. Once you have that, then the last step is you go to your aggregation table and you'll go to manage aggregations. And in there, you'll mention what aggregated functions, what aggregation functions are applied on the actual fact table. Uh, and that is called aggregation awareness, which I explained about that in the previous video. Once you have that aggregation awareness, then what happens is that when you query data from that actual fact table, it will actually go and query that data from the aggregation table as long as it is available in the aggregation. For example, here, uh, if I go and build a visualization using something such as sales amount, uh, I'll also enable my SQL profiler so that you can see it as well. SQL profiler is a tool that you can use to monitor queries sent to the SQL data source. There are other tools as well, but you can use this tool. So here, uh, let me do that bit again. I'll remove this visual. I'll add it again. And this should not, even though I'm getting data from fact internet sales, which you can see this direct query, still something like this would not hit any query to the data source. Uh, because I'm monitoring it, there is no query sent. If I come and say, let's slice and dice this by something such as customer English education, uh, still you see no queries sent to the data source because my aggregated table has those covered. But if I bring a uh, record, um, an attribute from a table that is not in my aggregated table, such as the promotion, if I bring promotion, uh, name or category. Let's bring category into the legend. As soon as I do that, first you see it is a little bit slower. Second, you'll see that the queries are generated. So this is sending query to the data source. So this is what you learned so far in the aggregation videos that I explained. What I'm about to tell you now is how to use layers of aggregation. What is the use of layers of aggregation? So in this scenario, you've seen that when we query data using some of the dimension tables, it works from the aggregated table because the aggregated table does have those in the plan, but not all others. So if I'll bring this, um, this one, for example, 
this is the this is the view of my models, right? So here you can see that I have, or, or probably better I show it in the Power BI itself. So here you can see that I have some tables in here and these tables, some of the dimensions are connected to the aggregated table. These are those dimensions. Uh, some of them are not, some of them directly connected to the fact table. For example, dim date is connected to both fact table and aggregated table. Dim customer connected to both ag aggregated table and fact. Uh, dim product subcategory connected to both. This means that my aggregated table is grouped by of customer, date, and subcategory, right? But something such as dim promotion or dim product specifically, these are not connected to the aggregated table. They are directly connected to the fact internet sales because those information is not available. Whenever we query that in the visualization, which is something like what you saw over here, I used promotion it sends query to that actual fact table. How we can avoid that? What we'll do is we'll create a second aggregated table. So the idea is something like what this slide is showing. The idea is that um, when you have multiple aggregated tables, like what you see here, if your visual hits the first aggregated table, that's good. If it doesn't, then it would try to hit the second aggregated table. If it cannot also reach that, then it would reach out to, to whatever um, your fact table source is. And it's not always two layers of aggregation. It can be like tens of layers of aggregation. It doesn't matter. So how do we do that? First, we'll go and create another aggregated table. I'll go and close this one so that I can show you the model that has multiple aggregations. And I also clear this. We don't need this for now. So in this model, this is a second model. In this model, uh, which is very similar to that model, the only difference is that I have two aggregated tables. You can actually see them in here as well. I have sales ag and I have sales and promotion ag. Sales ag is exactly the aggregation that I had before, which is aggregated by the customer, by the date, by the product subcategory. Sales and promotion ag is aggregated by all of those three plus it is also aggregated by the promotion. So when I zoom in here, you should see that how this is connected to the rest of the things. You see that this sales and promotion ag is not only connected to these three tables, but it is also have it also have a relationship with the promotion table, right? In fact, internet sales itself is connected to all of those tables. Plus it is also connected to another um, dimension. So we have two aggregated tables so far, and, and the second aggregated table can be created in any of those methods that I mentioned as well. It can be created using that uh, group by, Power Query, SQL code, DAX uh, functions, doesn't really matter. Once you create that, after you set the manage aggregation on the first table, you see the manage aggregation on the first table, you also set a feature here called precedence. Let me enable zooming so that you can see this much better. You set a feature called precedence. Precedence is telling to Power BI that which of these aggregated tables should be tried first. Normally you want the aggregated table that is smaller to be tried out first because that is like less row. In this case, this aggregated table is only aggregated by four of, by three of the dimensions. So I want this to be precedence first. And then the other one, which is a, when I go there and I go to manage aggregation and you see it has exactly the same manage aggregation setting. So you have to set it exactly like that. And this one uh, is like exactly the same group by customer key, things like that. Plus this also has a group by by promotion key as well. And the precedence for this is zero. So the one that has higher precedence would be the one that Power BI will try that out first. Then it will go to the second and third. So if you have like three layers, you would start from like two, one, zero, um, something like that. Just to show you how this works in uh, actual scenario. So here you see there is no uh, queries running at the moment here. I'm going to create a visual using fact internet sales, which you can see it's direct query. Once we have set up that manage aggregation in those tables, they will be hidden. Uh, behind the scene, Power BI is looking at them to provide the result of this. When I bring sales amount, 
This is getting data from the first aggregated table. You can't see that in here, which aggregated table it is getting from. Uh, but if you use something, a tool such as DAX Studio, you can monitor the queries sent to analysis services, semantic model behind the scene and find that out. But let's uh, skip that. Um, I want to show you when it hits that direct query source. Um, I will also bring something from customer, something such as education. This is in the first aggregated table, so it would not run any query against the data source. Then I will add something from promotion. In the previous Power BI semantic model, in the previous Power BI file, when I showed you that from promotion, as soon as we brought something, it hits the direct query source and it generated a query. But here it responds fast. When I come here, there is no query sent to the data source. There are some uh, options here, but these are not queries. These are some other transactions happening in my system. As you can see, there is no SQL query in any of these running. Uh, now, when I go to here, and this time I bring something that is not there. Uh, as you remember, pro product was not there. So if I go and bring something such as English description to tooltip, something like that. Right? As soon as I do that, then you will see that the SQL queries are generated and this is now hitting that direct query source because the two aggregated tables now don't have any of these. So even if you want something like that, we can even create like a third layers of layer of aggregation so that we can cover that. The point about creating aggregations is that the more layers you have, the better the performance would be. However, you always have to consider the uh, the size implications uh, because your model size will be bigger and bigger the more aggregations you add. Uh, but on the other hand side, you add the performance. So this is more like a trade-off. You have to check all these different settings and see how it is working. One of the other things that you need to check when you are doing aggregations is that you need to, uh, you need to check and see um, what fields from what tables are regularly used so that you can use that, use those tables and fields in your aggregations. Or start from your Power BI report, look at which charts and visualizations you have and which measures are more important, which dimensions are used more, start creating an aggregation based on that, then uh, add another layer of aggregation, another layer of aggregation, and have these layers of aggregations. When you have this setup of manage aggregation, Power BI manages that itself, so you don't really have to worry about that um, aggregation awareness. But if you are doing that on top of an import data fact table, then you have to write DAX code measures to cover that, which I have a separate video in this channel already about this, so go and check it out. I hope this video helped you to understand how the aggregation setup works, how the multiple layers of aggregation is using precedence. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye.